Hi guys, I'm Jennifer with The Family Fudge and today on What's Cooking Wednesday, I'm sharing some yummy party foods that are perfect for the whole family, especially if you're getting together for the big game. I'm kicking things off with my Philly cheese steak dip. This one is definitely a crowd pleaser. I like to serve it warm and bubbly. My version of this easy to make dip is also kid friendly because it's not too spicy. After that, I'm going to be making a chocolatey treat. These are definitely not your traditional Rice Krispie treats. I have a few secret ingredients that I like to put into mine. And to make them extra fun, we're going to make them look like little footballs. And lastly, to wash it all down, I have a fun drink to share with you. Another mocktail. Non-alcoholic, but still really special. You guys know I love my Dirty Cokes, my Dr. McCreamies, and my Shirley Temples. Well, today I'm sharing a new drink. This bubbly drink is fruity, refreshing, and has a funny name. It's called a Lime Ricky. So stay tuned and I will share all of these recipes with you. Okay guys, now before we get started on these yummy party foods, make sure to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already, and go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you like easy party foods. Now let's get started. I'm starting with about one pound of roast beef. Now this is deli meat, it's fully cooked, and using this versus raw meat is gonna make it a lot faster. I'm also going to be using one eight ounce package of room temperature cream cheese, about two cups of shredded mozzarella cheese. Now if you'd like, you could also use provolone instead. For my peppers, I'm actually going to use one green bell pepper and one poblano pepper. I really like the poblano pepper. It's not spicy at all, just gives it a little extra flavor. But if you prefer, you can go ahead and use two green bell peppers. It's totally up to you. I'm also using half of a medium onion, half a cup of mayonnaise, some steak seasoning. I like the kind from Trader Joe's, but you could also use some Montreal steak seasoning, whatever you have. You also need some garlic powder and salt and pepper to taste. Now this part is optional, but I like to garnish with a little bit of green onions. And if you wanna make your spicy, go ahead and add a few shakes of red pepper flakes. To cook my veggies, I'm also going to use about one tablespoon of butter and one tablespoon of olive oil. I'm going to start by chopping up all of my veggies, starting with my peppers. I wanna make sure to take the seeds out and chop these pretty small. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with my onion. Nice small pieces are key for this. I don't wanna bite down on a big piece of onion in my dip. I want it to all blend together. In a large skillet over medium heat, I'm gonna go ahead and add my butter and a little bit of olive oil. Once the butter is melted, I'm gonna go ahead and add my onions and let those cook for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to add my peppers. I'm just looking to cook these until they are softened. Now while my onions and peppers are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my roast beef. Now like I said, this is fully cooked deli meat, which makes it so easy, but if you'd like, you could go ahead and use thinly cut ribeye steak. You're just gonna wanna make sure to cook it before you add it into your dip. Now once the onions and peppers are softened and slightly caramelized, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Next, I'm going to take a medium-sized mixing bowl and I'm going to add all of the cream cheese, all of the mayonnaise and about half of my shredded cheese. I'm going to reserve some of it to top it before it goes into the oven. To this I'm also going to add about half a teaspoon of steak seasoning, half a teaspoon of powdered garlic, and some salt and pepper. To your tastes, of course. And now I'm going to stir it all up until combined. Now at this point my onions and my peppers have cooled down quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and add them into the bowl with all of my other ingredients and give it a big stir. I'm gonna go ahead and get this into my baking dish, which is a little bit smaller than a nine by 13. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my cheese. This is already smelling so good. Now I'm going to add this to my preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes or until everything is browned and bubbly. Now right when it comes out, I'm gonna go ahead and top it with some sliced green onions and it's ready to serve. I like to serve this with plenty of dipping options. I like to have pieces of carrots, celery, 
tortilla chips. You could even add some slices of bread. That would be really tasty. Coming up next, we're going to make our cocoa crispy treats in the shape of a football. Here's what you're going to need. Six cups of Cocoa Krispies cereal, 10 ounces of mini marshmallows, a quarter cup of butter, which is half of the stick, and then to make mine a little bit different, I like to add half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a good pinch of salt. Now to make the fun football design, I'm going to melt just a couple of these white chocolate wafers to decorate the top of our Rice Krispie footballs. This is definitely a recipe your kids can help you do. I'm gonna go ahead and have Jackson help me measure out six cups of Cocoa Krispies. I'm gonna take a large pot over medium heat and I'm gonna start browning my butter. Now when you're browning butter, you wanna do it slowly and watch it very carefully because you don't want it to burn. You just want to watch until it becomes a light golden color. At this point, I'm going to add all of my marshmallows and I'm gonna stir them around so that they're all coated in the butter. And I'm going to keep stirring this until all of the marshmallows are melted. When they are melted, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. And at this point, I'm going to add my cinnamon, my vanilla extract, and my salt and give it a big stir. Now I'm gonna very carefully add my marshmallow mixture to my Cocoa Krispies and then stir to combine. I'm gonna pour these out into a nine by 13 pan, which I've sprayed with some nonstick spray, and then flatten them out. The trick to good Rice Krispie treats is to not press them too firmly together. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a hard brick of Rice Krispies. I'm going to set these aside for about 20 to 30 minutes so that they can firm up. Next, what you're going to wanna to do is cut them out into a football shape. Now, if you don't have a football-shaped cookie cutter, you can go ahead and just use a knife. Next, I'm going to take a few of my white chocolate wafers and I'm going to melt them in the microwave. I'm gonna put them in for 15 seconds at a time, stirring as I go until they are melted. I'm gonna very carefully get this melted white chocolate into a sandwich-sized Ziploc bag to use as a piping bag. So I'm gonna very carefully cut the tip off and go ahead and make my football design. Now I do like to allow time for this white chocolate to fully harden before I serve them. That way they're not as messy. These Cocoa Krispie treats are definitely a hit with adults and kids, and you can actually make them a day in advance. Next up, we're making a mocktail, a non-alcoholic, fun and fruity drink. For this, I'm going to use some Sprite, some grape juice. I really like the 100% grape juice with no added sweeteners because that soda is sweet enough. And you also need a lot of fresh limes. I'm going to start by adding ice to each glass. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and fill them up three quarters of the way with Sprite. Next, I'm going to add the juice of one lime. Then I'm going to fill the rest with grape juice. And of course, I like to add some garnish just to make it look pretty. I really like the fresh lime juice in there. It really helps to balance out all the sweetness. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a big thumbs up and definitely go check out my brother's YouTube channel, Big John TV, for even more delicious and easy recipes. I'll go ahead and link it right up here. And also let me know in the comments down below, are you watching the big game? Who are you rooting for and what are you making? Because for me, the big game food is more exciting than the game itself. But that's just me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.